Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for the NASA Explorer School questions. My name is Evan and I go to John B. Carey in Richmond, Virginia. I would like to know why do you wear the orange suits? Well, the uh, purple ones kind of clash with my eyes. I think uh, I look a lot better in orange. Actually, the orange color is uh, for uh, make us more visible in case people need to find us. And uh, the reason we wear the suits is to protect us uh, in the event that uh, something happens that we're not expecting going either uphill or downhill. My name is China Williams, and I go to Forest Heights Elementary School in Columbia, South Carolina. I would like to know what are the differences in living in the space station from living in your home on Earth? Well, China, that's a good question. I can uh, tell you for starters, nothing stays where you put it. Um, everything floats, uh, including um, yourself, your food, uh, your clothes, everything uh, that you're working on. So you have to strap everything down. You can't lay it down on the table. And you can't keep your eyes off of it unless it's Velcroed to the wall. Hi, my name is Samantha Sloan, and I go to Dr. Rodriguez Elementary in Hard Engine, Texas. I would like to know what is the best part of your job. Hey, great question. Uh, there's a lot of really great parts about, uh, about the job. Uh, being up here floating uh, turns out to be uh, amazingly fun. And uh, you can see a couple of uh, my crewmates here upside down. And then the, uh, the other great part is uh, looking out the window. The uh, views looking down at the earth are uh, just fantastic from up here. and I'm in the sixth grade at Hobgood Elementary in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. My question is, what do you do in your free time and how much free time do you get? Hey, what I like to do is to look out the window and watch the earth go by. It's just beautiful. Uh, we don't get any free time, so I have to steal it from the boss. <laughs> Pretty much, but uh, the most I think everybody does that when they get a moment off they kind of look out the window and just see the whole world go by It's like a geography lesson. It's fantastic Hi, my name is Yvette. I am a fourth grader in Harland in Texas I am bilingual and I was wondering how many languages you need to speak to work on the International Space Station Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think we all agree that's a pretty good question. Uh, well, the the official main language on the space station, uh, one that we all understand, is English. Uh, however, um, it's very essential that you learn Russian as well, since uh, we tend to operate uh, in the Soyuz, uh, or we do operate in the Soyuz air, uh, spacecraft solely in Russian. Um, but uh, we have a lot of talented, um, very bright people on board, and some of them know several languages, uh, such as Japanese. Um, got uh, Suichi on board, and uh, French, German, uh, TJ knows German, so um, it's uh, when you have an international space station, it's almost endless, uh, the languages that could uh, come in handy. My name is Paige, and I go to Lebedon Middle School in Lebedon, Kentucky. My question is, what does it feel like after being on the space station when you come back to Earth? Well, uh, when you come back to Earth, things feel really, really heavy. Um, I remember taking off my helmet and, and feeling like I was holding a pickup truck in my hand. It felt so incredible. I was like, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to brush my teeth? My toothbrush is going to feel like a ton of bricks. But it um, turns out that you get really used to gravity again pretty quickly, within like an hour or so. And uh, you, uh, after, it takes a little while for you to get all your senses back. 
uh, and they won't let you drive a car usually for about a month. But uh, other than that, uh, after about a month, you're pretty much 100%. My name is Antonio and I go to Elon Children Center in Cudahy, California. And my question is, is there wind in space? If so, what causes it? <laughs> hey, well, we're going very, very fast up here, five miles per second, but we're out of the atmosphere. But there's a little bit of atmosphere left there, so there are a few atoms, I guess, hitting the front of station at five miles per second, so that's a very weak wind, but it's enough to slow the space station down and make it slowly fall back to Earth. So every so often we have to boost it back up again using a, a rocket motor on the back of the space station. My name is Aaron Smith, and I go to Orleans Elementary School in Orleans, Vermont. My question is, what is the temperature at the International Space Station? Inside here, it's uh, just like it is at school for you. It's uh, room temperature, very comfortable. We're just uh, working out here in uh, shirt sleeves. But when we go outside on our spacewalks, uh, the temperatures can vary to uh, plus or minus 200 degrees, uh, depending on whether the the sun's up or it's dark outside. Hi, my name is Jackson. I am a sixth grader at Hobgood Elementary in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. My question is, what is one of the worst and best effects of being in a microgravity environment? <laughs> for, for someone like me, it's uh, it's very nice to be able to float. That's probably the best effect. You get to hang around and uh, float, and you can become an expert gymnast in seconds. And you can do all sorts of things you can't do on the ground. Uh, one of the long-term problems with being in this environment, however, is uh, bone loss, muscle deconditioning, and uh, over time, we're starting to learn how to deal with that on board. Tracy here works out several hours a day trying to stay strong, so when she gets home in six months, she can uh, adapt very quickly. <laughs> My name is Sammy and I am a senior at Wendover High School. My question is, how do you feel about flying on the last space shuttle mission of Atlantis? Well, uh, we're not exactly sure that this is, in fact, the last space shuttle flight of Atlantis. Uh, if it is, though, we all consider it just as important as any of the other flights. This was the 32nd flight. 32nd time that Atlantis has launched into space and uh, flown around the Earth many, many times. So we're just another crew to be lucky enough to be part of that program. And uh, if it's the last flight, then it's truly an honor. My name is Charles, and I go to John B. Carey in Richmond, Virginia. My question is, did you like training to be an astronaut? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Actually, training to be an astronaut is a lot of fun. Uh, we get to fly airplanes around, uh, work in the simulator, and uh, go to class. All the things that uh, you would learn in school. Uh, we've been training, uh, the STS-132 crew's been training about eight months, so uh, just about a, a school year getting ready for this mission, but uh, it's all a whole lot of fun. My name is Serena Anderson and I go to Cumberland Middle School in Cumberland, Wisconsin. My question is when you go up into space, like how much pressure is it and how does it feel? Right, so um, here on the uh, space station, the, uh, the atmospheric pressure in here is just like sea level, 14.7 uh, psi. Um, as far as like during launch, we feel a lot of uh, forces acceleration as we're going up in the uh, space shuttle up to three times our uh, normal body weight. So it feels like there's uh, three of your friends standing on your chest um, as you're launching into space. And sometimes it's a little bit of work just to raise your uh, 
chest up to get some air into your lungs. But uh, after a couple days here on, uh, on station, you really adapt to all this, and uh, I, I feel great right now. Hi, my name is Megan, and I'm from Warren G. Hardy Middle School in Des Moines, Iowa. And my question is, is how long does it take for water to evaporate in space? Now, this is a tricky question. How long does it take for water to evaporate in space? If you put some water out in space, if you're on the night side of the Earth, it'll just freeze solid in it like a rock-hard iceberg immediately. If you're on the, uh, on the sun side, it'll uh, flash and boil almost immediately, and you'll just get water vapor. And sometimes there's some places where the water doesn't know whether to freeze or boil, and it kind of does both at the same time. And it's very weird looking. My name is Charles Wallace, and I go to Conyers Middle School in Conyers, Georgia. I would like to know, are there any concerns about the closure of the space shuttle missions? Well, the end of the space shuttle program is essentially inevitable, uh, and the, that is because the space shuttle can't travel outside of low Earth orbit. And if we as humans want to explore deeper into the universe, um, and starting with maybe the moon, moving on to asteroids and Mars, the, the space shuttle is not the machine that can do it. So we simply don't have enough money to continue to operate the space shuttle and develop a whole new spacecraft that can go beyond low Earth orbit. So it's a, it's a decision of national will. You know, if we want to explore the universe, we've got to stop flying the space shuttle. And it's a, a simple reality. Good question. My name is William, and in first grade, in Forest Lake Elementary, in Columbia, South Carolina, my question is, why isn't there much gravity on the moon? Hey, William. Uh, thanks for asking that question. Um, it's a good one. Uh, the reason that there's not as much, you don't feel as much gravity on the moon is because it's smaller than the Earth. Uh, the amount of gravity that a given planet, uh, or any, anything for that matter, pulls on everything else ha is uh, related to how big it is, how much mass it has. So the moon has a lot less mass than the Earth, so there's less gravity. And if you go to Jupiter, which has got a lot more mass than the Earth, then you'd feel a lot of gravity, and it, you'd feel really, really heavy. So uh, that's why. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm a junior at Wendover High. My question is, what is it like seeing the sunset or sunrise every 45 minutes? It's... Because of the, well, I'm starting to answer the question. <laughs> no, because you get to go around the Earth every 90 minutes or so, you naturally see a sunset and a sunrise every 90 minutes. And it's really amazing because you get to watch, you know, the, the Earth below you both at night and during the day in just an hour and a half, which is really, really exciting. The problem becomes when you're trying to go to sleep, for some people, because you actually have to shut the windows and seal yourself off inside and turn out the lights, because otherwise you'd have the light coming through the windows every 45 minutes, and that might keep some people awake. But not you. Oh, outside. Oh, going outside is EVA. That's a lot more fun, because you're not constrained by the windows, and you have the opportunity to uh, look down and see the Earth pass below your feet in darkness and in light. And it's amazing what you can see at night. Uh, not on this mission, on a previous mission, I saw a meteorite pass below me into the atmosphere and glow, and that was pretty amazing. Lightning storms, the uh, aurora we saw the other day, all sorts of amazing things you get to see outside at night that you don't necessarily think of. You just think of it, the, the darkness. So. Let me just add something to that real quick. The other interesting thing about sunrises and sunsets up here, though, is that they happen really fast. So it's not like uh, at home when you're sitting on the beach and just enjoying the sunset, go down into the ocean very slowly. 
here it just happens uh, so fast because we're traveling around the world so fast. So you're out there and you're looking at the sun and it's bright, 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 dark. It just, uh, it happens that quick. Hi, my name is Selena. I'm a fourth grader in Harlingen, Texas. In comparison to plant life on Earth, do the plants grown on the International Space Station grow at the same rate? Selena, that's a really uh, mature question, and um, you're ahead of your time. The space station uh, science uh, on board here really is looking at that very question itself. We're looking at Arabidopsis seeds and trying to understand because we see that the roots grow in a, a different way here on orbit with the lack of gravity than they do on Earth. And we're hoping that that will help us to understand uh, plant growth um, on Earth a little better. So um, I can tell you that uh, they do grow a little differently, but how? That's something that we're studying right now. And it's kind of interesting to see plants growing up here in the space station. Good question. My name is Jack A. Black, and I go to Arapaho Middle School in Arapaho, Wyoming. My question is, do you take any medication for the function of your bone marrow? Actually, I'd have to say no. We don't take any medications uh, that I know of, um, but we are trying to understand better how to preserve bone mass up here on orbit for long duration. And so one of the uh, ways that we counteract the effect of gravity or the lack of gravity here on orbit is to do exercise. We find that the more exercise we do before we launch into space as well as while we're on orbit helps to maintain our bone mass, which is extremely important. And we're trying to study that right now to see how much we need to do and for uh, um, how frequent we need to do that in order to maintain and possibly even uh, grow stronger bones on orbit. And that'll also help us to understand our own bone growth uh, back at home on Earth. Great questions, you guys. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Atlanta Station and NASA Explorer Schools. Atlanta Station, we now resume in operational audio communications.